Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing today? It's so nice to see all your smiley faces. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're having a good day. If you're not having a good day, don't worry about it because we're here to uh, make you smile and uh, also entertain you as well. Because, boy, we have an extraordinary guest. We've got a, a legend, a music legend actually coming through. Female rocker, singer, actress, extraordinaire. Yes, she's done it all, continues to do it all. The incredible Ellen Foley is with us live and direct from the country home up in Dutchess County, New York. Very nice. And she just asked me a minute or so ago, is it okay if I leave the air conditioning on? And I said, if you want to even make it colder, by all means do that because it, Maybe it is hot outside. Uh, you know, in the upper 90s here in the Northeastern United States, where this show broadcasts from, it's been a, we're talking almost 100 happening on Saturday. <laughs> so jump in the pool, dive in the ocean, which I like to do. We're here along the coast, as you guys know, in the New York area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. And, uh, turn on the AC and have lots of things that have ice cubes in it of, of all kinds. Matter of fact, the whole country is uh, really, really hot. So um, just cool off, enjoy and kick back with us. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show series. Some 730 episodes or so that we have done thus far. It's really cool and it continues to grow. And thanks so much for telling everybody about our show. Extraordinary guests that come in from all walks of life. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, this is the channel you're watching right now. We'd love it if you do that. Click the notification bell. That doesn't cost a thing to do that. And uh, that way there you'll be kept abreast of all the cool episodes, great guests, and all the fun we have here on the Gym Master Show Live. Again, really excited to have uh, Ellen with us. We're going to go through a lot of really cool things. She's also going to tell us about some cool things that she's working on as well. Uh, Ellen, of course, you know from a variety of different backgrounds. Some of you may know her as an actress from television work, things of that nature. Some of you, of course, definitely know her for her musical prowess as well, which is really, really incredible. Matter of fact, American singer and actress Ellen Foley appeared on Broadway and television. She also co-starred in the sitcom Night Court on NBC and music. She has released five solo albums, best known for her collaborations with rock singer Meat Loaf, of course. She was the powerhouse voice behind Meat Loaf's multi-platinum 1977 legendary duet Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Ellen is here with us on the show from Dutchess County, New York, the country home. Uh, her strong and passionate, at times bone shivering voice, combined with her acting talent and dance moves, allowed for a diverse and successful career, something she always dreamed of as a girl growing up in the middle of the country in St. Louis, Missouri. She left St. Louis the day after she turned 21, moved to New York to study acting. Then she went on cattle call auditions to get a few parts on stage, but her first Paying job was singing in a music comedy review in the Catskills. Ellen started a band called uh, Big Jive and performed in Atlantic City before there were even casinos. She then got a part uh, doing more edgy comedy with the National Lampoon Show. And it was completely <laughs> tasteless, she remembers, but a lot of fun. <laughs> During her tour with National Lampoon, she met fellow actors Meat Loaf and Jim Steinman, who would write Paradise. Now, after Paradise... With Meatloaf, Ellen received several gold records and awards for three solo albums, Night Out, Spirit of St. Louis, Another Breath, which uh, were produced by high-profile rock legends such as uh, Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson and Mick Jones and Joe Strummer of The Clash. And um, isn't that cool? Her Broadway stage career includes starring in Hair, Into the Woods, Me and My Girl, and it was Ellen who originated the role of the witch in Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods at San Diego's Old Globe Theater. Reportedly, Sondheim's favorite witch, too, he called her, the Alpha and the Omega. Ellen performed a dance number in the movie Hair, choreographed with uh, Twyler Tharp, directed by Milo's Foreman. She also uh, featured roles in Tootsie, Fatal Attraction, Married to the Mob, Cocktail with Tom Cruise, and uh, she even starred in Lies I Told My Sister, which was shown at film festivals in the U.S. and Canada. Many of her fans, of course, also know her as public defender Billy Young in the TV series on NBC, Night Court, which she starred in uh, the very first season as well. We're going to talk about all this and so much more. Again, there's so much more to her story. In 2021, she uh, announced a new album, Fighting Words, again, in collaboration Um 
with uh, incredible folks, we're going to tell you, one of them being Paul Foglino. The LP features 10 new tracks, as well as Ellen's version of Heaven Can Wait and Jim Steinman penned ballad from Bad Out of Hell, in which she hadn't originally performed. And that version of Heaven Can Wait first appeared on the soundtrack to Lies I Told My Little Sister, which uh, featured Ellen in a supporting role. Today, she has that same rock and roll energy and great stage moves she did when she was uh, fighting off meatloaf at the dashboard light. <laughs> really cool stuff. And we're so honored to have her here on the show. So gang, uh, kick back, enjoy. Don't forget if you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, when you do, that allows you to comment in our JMS Live Lovity chat room. That's the chat room where you guys can talk amongst yourselves, chat, say hello to one another. You can. We can also see some of your comments. We'll try to sprinkle maybe a few here on our uh, screen as we're chatting. And also don't forget, if you want to support what we're doing, you can do the super thanks heart icon that's on the YouTube channel, super chat, super emoji, super stickers, and all kinds of cool things like that. Before we welcome her on, we've got something really cool we want to show you. This is the sizzle reel that was just finished today just in time for our show take a look at this gang and together we will welcome ellen foley to the gym master show since I've started in the music business. This is for Meat and Jim. I tell you, whether it's performing with Meatloaf or gracing the cover of TV Guide, 
<laughs> she's done it all and she continues to do, do it all. And we're so glad that she's taken time to grace us with her presence. Here's a more recent photo as well with uh, Ellen coming to us again from the country home. Uh, join me, gang, in welcoming uh, a music legend and so much more. Uh, the incomparable Ellen Foley is here. She's in the house, and we're so excited to have her here. So here she is. Welcome, Ellen. It's so great to have you with us. <laughs> Hi, Jim. I'm exhausted after all that. I'm I tell exhausted. you, you've done a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll just let you keep talking. And I well, just and keep talking. You know, if you keep saying the country home, you're going nice. to ruin my street cred. The image, right? <laughs> you got to get back into that city soon. I do. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank How you. are I'm you? I'm glad to be here. I mean, uh, I, I must admit I haven't seen the show, but your intro, the graphic with the cartoon and all, it's just great. Oh, the show open? Yeah. yeah. We had uh, a designer, actually an animator. No, actually he's an illustrator, cartoonist and illustrator and a friend of mine. And when he was designing the logo for the Gym Master Show for us, because we were looking for a new logo, logo, and uh, we wanted something cool. And he said, retro is very popular right now. Go with retro. And I said, okay, we'll go with retro. And uh, when he was designing the Gym Master Show logo and illustration, he was also designing a cover album art work for Aerosmith at the same time. <laughs> And then I said to his, to him, I said, well, gee, we, we want to animate it too. How do we get it to move around and pop out of the screen and all? And his daughter uh, is an animator. So he's the illustrator. She's the animator. She took it, brought it to life. And uh, at the time she was doing that for us, she was doing animations for The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So not too bad. <laughs> the talent family. But no, it's, it's a, yes. I'm very thrilled to be here. I think it's just, it's. So far, uh, I just think it's wonderful. Well, uh, and I think there's, uh, did you, I think you said you saw the episode with, is it Melba Moore or Kevin Eubanks? There's yes. one of the, a couple of them that you've Melba seen. Moore. That, I mean, just unbelievable. A, a hero, a hero to me, you know, coming to New York and I have to stop twist trolling on this That's chair. That's it, you're in a swivel chair, huh? Yes. <laughs> just tell me if I'm doing that. Um, oh, no. Coming to New York in the early 70s. Uh, and hearing Melba Moore was first in the show Pearly. Yes. And, I mean, you know, and have followed her career and have I have met her. And I, I just think was, I bet it was a wonderful conversation. with. She's her. amazing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And of course, our friend Paul Zolo. As a matter of fact, uh, he had commented, bravo, Ellen Foley is great. So glad you're doing a show with her right on from our buddy Paul, who is... Yeah nothing but the best as well. And uh, so, you know, it's uh, summertime and uh, you're, you're there uh, at the uh, country house. <laughs> you're outside the city at the moment. I'm here, you know, on the Upper West Side. It's, uh, yes, exactly. Very, uh, you must have very, uh, you know, thick windows. You don't hear. Thick windows, yeah, you're... double hung, I think. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I'm just so lucky. I mean, we... We've had this house for a long time, yes. and but I mean, I've lived in the apartment uh, on the Upper West Side where we live. My husband and I, we have two grown sons. Yes. I've moved in there in the middle 70s, but we bought this house in 20... Um, there they are. There they are. <laughs> there they are. We do our research around here, Tim I tell you. on our left, Doug, my husband, Henry, and me, and that, that is, is this house. But we bought this this uh, we bought this house in um, the year after 9/11, right? Because we said, okay, you know, we you have to have options. And then it's been great, but we have been up here for the majority since the beginning of the, the pandemic, which is something I never thought I could do was to live in the country almost full time because you know. I'm a city person. Has it inspired you at all? Has it brought on some some new things for you musically at all, being in a more serene environment, Ellen? Oh, good question. I but I I think that um, my I, I I'm I'm more attracted to ballads now than I ever have. I mean, you were having can wait, and we do 
Ian Hunter's Irene Wilde in the show. And there's just something that I feel is richer maybe about the way I sing. But, you know, richness, vocal um, uh, richness comes with time. You know, I, I, you know, to pat myself on the back, I have to say, and people say to me because I have kept up with the work on my voice, I sound kind of like I did a long time ago. Is that not unbelievable? Yes. You know, yeah. like you could be totally burnt out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but it's great. You know, I'm up here in the summer. I can swim and garden and all that sort of, excuse me, all that sort of stuff. So. That's so cool. That's so cool. Here's my glasses. I wanted to wear my glasses. Oh, there because you are. <laughs> I want to. And I just wanted the glass because I didn't put on any makeup. <laughs> and I was, right. here we go. You know, typical. Yeah. I'm like, where's my glasses? Where's my, I don't have them. I wonder where my, and I just look down and there they are. I think I'm going to put them on. Because <laughs> I wore no eye makeup. I have a real aversion to makeup. Yes, yes. Anyway. Well, I tell you, it's really an honor to have you here. And uh, I mentioned you grew up in St. Louis. What were some of the inspirations early on for you, Ellen, to want to go into music and, and the arts and to, to pursue this career? Of course, as an actress, uh, which is at the forefront of all of this as well. I mean, for you, um, is there one that speaks to you more? Is it the music? Is it acting? Are they equal for you? I think now it's music because I see myself as um, having a really unique voice that nobody, I don't think anybody really sounds like me. And I've been working more steadily at it than I have with the acting. And I think there are other people who are probably have been working at the acting, the straight acting without singing a lot more and a lot longer than I have in my life. So at this point in time, I'm, I'm a singer. I'm settling, I'm a singer. And I, I feel good about the voice, the work, the material. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? So then early on when you're, you're growing up there in, in St. Louis, what were some of those early influences? Who were some of the people that you were uh, being inspired by, whether it's uh, you know people professionally or maybe even within your family? Were there folks who were you know, entertainers, people that were musically uh, well, I adept? The, cra the craziest thing, and I think a lot of people my age can probably relate, is watching The Little Rascals. Oh, sure, yeah. The Little Rascals. And I saw those kids, you know, not, there was a show within a show. Those Absolutely. Kids singing and dancing. And, you know, uh, as a kid, you're like, oh. And I guess a lot of people watch that and weren't so moved by it as I was and, and inspired. But then I, it, there was uh, the people in my family our hands they they sent my sisters who are older than me they were you know they were like teenagers in the 50s they would do things like lip sync in the living room they would lip sync and they would jitterbug you know and and so they were kind of the wannabe performers and but i i ended up actually not lip syncing but singing out loud so, so they were millie vanilli before millie vanilli existed <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of my sisters named Jilly, so I'd read Jilly. Oh, that's <laughs> um, and, you know, got into the singing early uh, when I was, I went to Catholic school, so there was always the, 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 the choir, you know, singing funerals and things like that, but got into shows early. I, I always thought, I think it's funny when I think of it, the first song I ever sang to... Uh, Audition for a grade school play, maybe in fourth grade, was Goldfinger. And if anybody knows wow. Goldfinger by yeah. Shirley Bassey, Shirley Bassey, oh, yes, finger, yeah, you know, yeah, up there, you know, belting it away, and um, you know, just always did it. And then, in terms of inspiration, I went to a girls' Catholic school, and there was a nun named Sister Marie Blanche, and she was a theater person. I always had my doubts is if there was a St. Blanche, I think she might have named herself after Tennessee Williams Blanche Dubois, uh. actually. But, you know, she was, she was, she directed the shows. 
She was the, the drama teacher. She was the speech teacher. And I, I really uh, flourished and became focused and, and really figured out how I wanted to do things yeah. under her. I would say she was, she was a, she was a big inspiration for me. In terms of music, what were you listening to at the time? Who were some of the folks that were inspiring you that you heard either on the radio or you were getting their LPs? Um, well, when I was really young, it was the, the girl groups, uh, of course, the Phil Spectors, they're the, the, um, the Four mm -hmm. Seasons. The Ronnie uh, Spector and the Ronettes. Ronettes. Ronnie Spector. She was a close, Austin. dear friend of ours, actually. We Is just, she? yeah, just lost in January. She passed. Yeah. I know. I'm so sorry. I met her once. And actually, just, I would say in the last five years or so, I heard a radio performance she did, and she sounded fantastic. Yes. And she we're still performing, fantastic. still recording. Yeah. Still, still doing her thing. Exactly. Yeah. She certainly um, had some interesting stories to tell too about her. Yes. Book. And her book was just re-released. Uh, she was able to uh, add some things to it and finish it before her passing. And, uh -huh. uh, and there's a biopic that's going to be coming out with Zendaya playing her because they look so similar. Uh, Zendaya and, is a genius. That and kid. she loved her. They met and they chatted about it. And, yes. And, and Ronnie had picked her to be the one to... No kidding. That's beautiful, oh, isn't it? You're right. Now I, th I see their two faces. Yes. Oh, I love that. But you yourself, too. I mean, pow. <laughs> pow what? Pow, fantastic. I mean... Yeah, that's uh, a cool picture, right? Isn't it? Yes. I love Absol that. Absolutely. Oh, All of these. look at her. She's sultry. <laughs> so... When you're deciding what to do and to pursue the arts and pursue the career, um, what, what would you say was like a really pivotal, we all have pivotal opportunities in our lives where somebody opens the door for us or the door is opened for us what, or we just you know burst the door open. What was the one or two monumental moments for you, Ellen, that really got things rolling for you where people understood, you know, your incredible talent? Well, I would say first it had to do with moving to New York. Um, I moved to New York and I actually moved there with a, a boyfriend of mine. We had a band together. I don't know. That's hard to say. I mean, the, the I guess very early on in my career is when I met, uh, Meatloaf and Steinman and 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 sang uh, the Paradise song and that really, I mean that that made things so much easier for me in terms of of yeah, there he is why I ought to <laughs> get a do you know the record deal and and just get out there and like you said I was able to work with a lot of incredible people. Yes. And I would, I would say how lucky I have been. I mean, I have a song um, on my third album that was written by Ellie Greenwich. I, you know, worked with uh, Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson and The Clash. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, I would say I was lucky, but I guess I'm lucky that there's something attractive in me. You know, I guess I... I have some talent that, that you know, I had, you know, it, I, it's, that I, I attract these kind of people. You know, I, I just, you know, been very lucky. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And with the, the crossing of the music with, with acting as well. And I mentioned uh, the involvement with hair. Tell us about that. That's, that was exciting. Um. Well, we did, I was in the revival, yeah. Broadway revival of Hair, which was kind of uh, a miscalculation because the, the, the original had closed in, in, gosh, I don't know, early 70s. And this was in 77. Yes. So to bring it back, I think it was a little early, but, uh, you know, it was fun. I, I, was, I played Sheila, the female lead, sang... Good Morning, Starshine, and Easy to Be Hard. But then I was cast, as you see here, in 
uh, the film, Milos Forman and Twyla, uh, Twyla Tharp choreographing. And uh, this, I always say, this, where you see here, we were filming in Central Park, and it was an amazing sort of fall day. And the uh, it was choreographed that there were these, you know, beautiful black guys playing basketball around us, weaving around. And I had the solo, so I was the girl in the middle, lucky to say. And then somehow, my, I'm not really, good, I can move really well. I got my own thing, my own moves, but Twyla Tharp really liked those moves and what I did. So, so yeah. it was just the biggest thrill to be working with her. Isn't that incredible? Also, too, um, you know, as you're going along, so many incredible experiences that you've had. Um, and recording in the studio, too. I mean, prolific albums. Do you have any albums that or any material that for you is your personal favorite, Ellen? And I know it's hard because they're all like your your babies. It's hard to pick. It is hard. Um, I would say the, the two records... I like most was my first record was the uh, night out record that I did with Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson because it, it came, you know, the only record I had ever sung on period before that was the meatloaf record. So it came out of that with the big wall of sound, with the attitude, with the girl group, um, uh, vocal sound and, and really it made a lot of sense coming off it. And it was very successful. Um, and then I would say that my favorite record after that is this, the most recent record I did. Um, the, uh, what's it called? What's my, what's it called? The, <laughs> the, the one that you just did fighting words. Uh, Fighting words, thank you. Yes. The material, because I had been working with Paul Taglino for several years, and we had done one record before. It was really good. But this this was really honing that. There he is, Paul. Mm. And we say he's the second runner-up in a um, Charlie Sheen look-alike contest. Right. <laughs> Tell us about him for folks who uh, don't know him in the way that you always have. He... Um, it was he's kind of a, uh, a, a folk, he was always kind of a folky guy. Yeah. He had a band called the Five Chinese Brothers mm -hmm. in New York. And um, I met him, we were doing a show, a musical called Hercules in High Suburbia mm -hmm. that took the Hercules myth, but modernized it. So Hercules and Megara, his wife, who I played, were living in this, in a suburban modern um, uh, background, and Paul wrote uh, the music and lyrics for that show. And you know, he had never written a, a theatrical show before, but we took it to the Fringe Festival. He won all the awards, you know, best best lyrics, best uh, composer. And that after that, after the show, I said, we you know, we both said to each other, we should do something. And, you know, we didn't know. So we sat on my sofa for a while and said, well, maybe we should be a Stones cover band because mm. I'm like a Stones freak. And so and then one day he woke up and said, well, wait a minute. I'm a songwriter. So he, you know, right. he wrote songs and we put together a band and we played out for a while and then had the material to come up with that in 2013 was the uh, About Time. Record. Yes, right. Yeah. And what was that like when that came out? That had to be again another really incredible moment for you. Well, it it was at a time that I didn't really have a structure, a, you know, a uh, behind me. So he and I just sort of put it out, put it out there, uh, and you know, didn't get a lot of attention as opposed to this new record. Fighting Words, where I, I had a uh, publicist, a guy named Randy Haker, who I met, yeah, that's how I met Paul Zalo, who did an amazing job getting me a lot of press, a lot of interviews, a lot of attention, and it made all the difference in the world, just having have, having somebody to put you out, put you out there, because obviously my first three albums were back in the day 
when I had a record label. I was on um, Cleveland International Epic CBS Records. But now, you know, there's no there's no record label, which is yeah. fun. You know, I've got, I got this guy. He promoted it. And, you know, we definitely sold some records. And, I, you know, my name and my face and my chit chat has been definitely out there the last year or so. It's really incredible, isn't it? And, and when you and look at all, just all the amount of music too that you are responsible for over the years is yeah. extraordinary. Uh, did you ever count up how many albums, how many songs, or would that how take, many songs? No, that I would take a lifetime, huh? I don't think so, really. I mean, what do you figure? Maybe on every album, there's between maybe 15 songs or something. And uh, I've made now five albums. So, you know, if I could, if I could multiply, I could tell you how many there are. <laughs> how, how did the whole um, meatloaf collaboration happen? How did you end up meeting or getting introduced to, to meatloaf and having that happen you know along well we the way were as you said in the intro we were in uh the national lampoon show right uh we on the road so it was just this ragtag group of of actors and and you know the stage manager driving this blue van and steinman jim steinman the composer of of course all the meatloaf material was came along as the musical director i think he came along because he because Meat uh, was going to be acting in the show, and, and Jim was in the midst of writing the songs for Bad Out of Hell. Mm -hmm. So he was there, and uh, he wrote Paradise while we were on the road mm. doing this show. You know, inspired, I like to think, or truly yes. by Meat and my voice, what, what could happen with us together. Your voice is... Unique, absolutely. Uh, like we were saying with Ronnie Spector too, there isn't another Ronnie Spector in terms of the sound of her voice. The same with you. Your voice is really, it's pure, it's authentic, it's real, it, 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 it envelops you. I mean, there's no way that you can't be moved by it and, and feel the material that you're you're presenting. And that's a, that's a gift. I mean, that's a gift from you know, above or what have you, it's a gift and you've been able to, uh, to nurture it and take care of it. And I mean, do you do various things? Do you have, was it, throughout the years, did you have routines in terms of how you've cared for the voice, things you did in preparation for going in the studio or, or going on stage? Some well, it's things just, that routines. Yeah. It's, it, it's just vocalizing. I mean, even now today, I, we have a, a show in October, so I always say, you know, the two months before the gig is when I start singing again. So in the last couple of, I have, I have uh, recordings of voice lessons, um, exercises with, with my voice teacher. And I work with that. That's it. And I've always done that, you know, to get up and sing without vocalizing. I've tried it and it doesn't work. It doesn't For work. Me, it doesn't. I mean, I, I used to hear that Streisand didn't, Streisand, sorry didn't uh, or doesn't vocalize and you know but she's a freak of nature so what can i say but whether that's true or not it's hard to believe but yeah it's always always about the um uh, the the strengthening the working the muscle and and working your range and 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 singing the songs you know singing those songs every day that you're going to be singing yeah. You're singing anything, singing right. anything. It doesn't matter what you sing. The um, that meeting and that performance with Meatloaf, uh, where do you rank that in terms of the career and how that really sort of catapulted things maybe to another level for you in certain ways, just in terms of notoriety and exposure? Well, certainly. I mean, I don't know. I, I probably thought that making having having a, a career as a recording artist was, wow, gosh, that's a dream. That's something that would you know be nice. But here I am. I'm an actor. I'm doing musicals, and then I was able to sing on this record, and uh, I was able to fulfill that dream, become a rock and roll singer. Is it was everything. Everything. 
Is that something that uh, you had always wanted to do uh, when you were, you know, a little girl and you wanted to be a rock singer or did you want to be the actress or both? Uh, I think, I think sort of both. I mean, yeah. I have sort of a hodgepodge of, of, um, of favorite singers as a kid. I loved first Streisand and Mick Jagger. And of course, it's always Mick Jagger ever since and always. And then I love Barbara Cook in The Music Man. That was my oh, favorite yes. musical when I was a kid. I mean, yeah. So there was a lot, there are a lot of influences in my life and times. Absolutely, yes. You know, I mentioned some of the uh, epic things that you've been involved in um, in theater, which I know a lot of people focus on, on the music because the music really uh is so widely revered but th that broadway career as i mentioned hair into the woods me and my girl uh and even the role of the witch in stephen sondheim's into the woods where sondheim said you're his favorite witch well, that's, <laughs> that's what was reported to me but we'll I, take I, it right let's let's I, take I, it because I, 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 I hate to say it but i kind of believe it. yeah he was, he was when we did it out at the old globe in san diego he was so supportive to me and you know Just... to be able to have created something to sit with him at the piano and learn learn the songs and then i went back and you know did it uh at w when it was at the end of its run on broadway yeah That's what you said when about the alpha and the omega that's when he yes. gave us closing night uh, copies of the score. He said to me, Ellen, you are my alpha and omega, which I'm like, come on. What is yeah, this? Yeah. Is this real? Is, is this, this real? Time? Pinch me moment. But it really, it really, God, if, if I, I mean, I love my, my uh, rock and roll performing, but if, if there was something I probably could have done for years at a time, for years, it would have been that rolling into the woods. Cause right. it was just yeah. like, that's you know yeah. so dark and you just got to chew up the uh the set you know and it, it was so great wow when you were at the piano with steven sondheim did you think when you reflect on it now uh that you really got what was happening there that here you are at the piano with steven sondheim now of course we look back with his passing and the influence that he made in just music and stage and culture and just everything is yeah. prolific. Did you think at the time you were really getting what the power of that, those moments were for you? I'm not sure that I did. I came into that show a bit of fish out of water because I hadn't, it was a little after I had just stopped doing music. So, you know, I was not, you know, a, a big Sondheim uh, aficionado. I didn't know as much. So that, but that's almost good because you're just right. in it. Yes. In, I, I say that about Ian Hunter and Mick Ronson too, when I did my first record, you know. I mean, I had just fallen off the turnip truck not too many years before. You know, did I, I know Mott, Mott the Hoople? I don't know. And Mick Ronson, yeah, I knew David. So it's kind of good if you just go into something like you know, this is fantastic. I mean, of course, I knew who Sondheim was, and oh, sure. and 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 understood the weight of it, and and creating. I mean, but it was a pretty stressful thing too, also creating, you know, something for the first time, of that weight, you know, with him. Yeah. yeah. Because the dir the director didn't like me, so he was giving me a hard time, but Sondheim did. But you had some Sondheim right there. Yes. I did. I uh, did. That's that's it's absolutely incredible. We were looking at some press too, some cool things over the years, uh, coverage. I mean, that was back home in St. Louis. As all these fabulous things were happening for you, I would imagine the family at home they were proud and rooting for you and like, my God, look at what's going on here. She moves to New York and she's she's uh, you know Broadway and studios and just so much incredibleness going on. Well, um, my mom was always a uh, kind of a stage mother to to the small degree in St. Louis. But when I was on the road in Europe after my first album, yes. I took her with me. So she was on the bus with me and the, and the band, 
And this band, they were not angels, you know. So I took her on the road with me. And I remember one time um, we were in Cleveland and there's this, I don't remember the name of the, the hotel in Cleveland, but it's a very, it's this rock and roll hotel. And we were in the lobby and I guess my mother was talking to some other woman or somebody in the lobby. And she <laughs> said to her, well, you know, we're rock and roll people. We're rock and roll people. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I, I always, I always had her on my side for sure, and my sisters. Everybody has always been very into and very supportive of what I do. You know, There's a cool shot there too, huh? Tell us about this one. Well, I think we both look like you know very miserable. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, that yeah, <laughs> that that is a cool shot, uh, mm -hmm. and and this one too as well. So that's uh, Mick Jones from Clash, of course, absolutely, uh -huh. part of the whole uh, history. And then also, too, um, television sort of came into the picture. I mean, like I said, you've really touched upon all of the areas of the arts, from film to stage to music to, to television uh, in, in incredible ways. How did that opportunity come your way to be a part of Night Court? in the beginning that first year at least as uh yeah. really young uh, actually it was the second season the second season and you know they kept replacing people like they replaced uh, me after i after that season it was you know just your typical uh you know um audition in new york yeah. and i guess i got put on tape and they they were replacing somebody so they wanted somebody quick so they you know i got flown out to audition went and then got the job went home and it it was not easy for me because uh it was it was it was too fast being taken out of my my life and being being in la which i never really got the hang of i would say yeah. everybody that i worked with you know they were you know they were settled there and they had families yeah. you know and i was like i don't know you know yeah so but it lasted a while but i you know i don't think it was my destiny but Actually. you also were in another uh, series because i know a couple of our uh, viewers and we welcome everybody who's commenting great comments and great uh, things we've been sprinkling a few of them on here uh three girls that's three, girls, series, three uh, yeah yeah tell us about that that was well, cool that that was quite something I mean, I was, I guess, 25 and they did, they, you know, it was going to be a variety show, which back then in 77 or whenever it was, was were still on. And it was written and produced by people who, who were writers and producers on um, Carol Burnett and the Smothers Brothers. So, but they, they auditioned all over the place. And then the three of us were myself, uh, Mimi Kennedy, who's on the show, Mom, and of course, Debbie Allen, who is Debbie Allen. And we did sketches. My specialty was I would sing a big solo every week. Debbie would have some sort of dance. Mimi would have the, the weight of the comedy. And it was um, a, it was four, it was a summer replacement, which used to be a thing. So we did four of them. And in the first one, Bob Mackey did the costumes. I still have this gown, this incredible gown that must weigh 10 pounds. It's all beaded. Not and, the one uh, that uh, Carol Burnett uh, saw in the window. And, uh... <laughs> no, 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 not, not uh, Gone with the Wind. No, that's it. <laughs> but um, it, we, yeah, it was quite something. It was like, oh, you know, talk about going from nothing. I, it's, yeah. I done, I guess it was after, because that was a wild time, because it was after the Lampoon show yes. in the middle of recording Bad Eye of Hell, because I remember coming back to do some sort of overdubs going up to Todd Rundgren's studio. So it was kind of an amazing time for me. Did you like television? Was it something that uh, spoke to you? I mean, again, those are wonderful opportunities for, to express, you know, uh, your acting prowess, but also right. exposure right. is fantastic. Did you en course, enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. loved, I loved the, the three girls. Three. It was, that was fun because I mean, we had guests, we had 
you know, Carol yeah. Burnett, Zsa, Zsa Gabor, um, Florence Henderson. That was the opening uh, thing. They were, they, they were auditioning. So the final six girls were the three of us, the Mimi and, and Debbie and I, and Zsa, Zsa Gabor, Carol Burnett, and Florence Henderson. And, you know, we were all up there and, and you know, lined up. And they and you know they said uh, oh, sorry, ladies, to the three of them, and said Ellen, Mimi, Debbie, you've got the job. And of course, the three superstars sort of skulked off, you know. So it was a lot of great, great writing, a lot of great sketches. But we have Bob Hope and Steve Martin and Flip Wilson. I mean, it, it was pretty. It was fantastic. Not incredible. I in a bottle, as they say. Yes. I, I mentioned, too, as you just brought up, uh, the National Lampoon Show. What was it like being a part of that? I mean, there's another legendary uh, production. It was fun because it was very irreverent. And, you know, you had the um, the freedom to do to do what not whatever you wanted, because I was too young to think that, oh, yeah, I'm going to improvise. I'm going to improve on this. no. But certainly to make to make it your own, and and it wasn't anything like certainly like I had ever done before. Yeah, you know there was the sketch I always talk about with uh, with me and Meat, uh, where um, I come in and I throw up my hat. You know, I'm like Mary Tyler Moore, yeah. except that I'm blind. Yes. And uh, you know I miss my hat, and yeah. he comes in and he's my boyfriend. You know, but he then he pretends he's my dog and he's humping my leg, <laughs> doing just unspeakable things to me. So <laughs> that was the level. I, I I don't know if you were ever on, but I'll throw this out there. I I could have seen you definitely on at least one or two episodes of Laughing. <laughs> no, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> That was actually even before my. That episode. was yeah, sock it to me and that whole that whole thing. I've uh, been watching it lately because there's this. It's on on oh, decades. You ever decades. Seen that? decades. Yes, I love it. So I watch, I watch uh, laughing all the time. You also had an opportunity. I mentioned this in the introduction as well to be in cocktail. I mean, we're talking oh, about yeah. some of these great movies that you're in too. Tell yeah. us about that. And there you are with Tom Cruise. Uh, that was fun. Um, it was up in Toronto. Toronto. And, yeah. you know, I, you know, was a waitress and, you know, was bitchy waitress and, you know, was giving him a hard time because he didn't know what I was doing. And then we had this scene in the end uh, here when I, I come and get, you know, I, I guess I felt a little bad. I was going to here take some money. He goes, he goes, um, he goes, oh, oh, I'm so, I'm sorry, I called you a bitch. I'm like, why? I am a bitch, you know. And that, was, <laughs> that was my big scene with Tom Cruise, but it was fun. But that's, you know, it's a, it's a classic, and uh, just to have the opportunity again, the exposure is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've just, uh, when you really think about it, the, the amount of areas again that you've touched, you, you can't really just say music. You know, I'm talking about the, the people that are admirers can't just say, well, she just did music or she just did. You've really it's a full circle thing for you. And and you're still performing. Like you said, you've got the show coming up uh, in the fall as well. Tell us about some of the cool things that um, that you're doing now that people might uh, really want to go out and see and, and enjoy because well, you are is, yeah. you're living life uh, to the fullest. A friend of mine named Robert I. Rubinsky and I started uh, working on a show, I'd say almost five years ago. And it ended up being called uh, Club, da Club Dada, mm -hmm. uh, parentheses, in difficult times. And it's kind of a, it's about these, these two characters. It's almost sort of like Weimar, German um uh, some of it, but these two characters you feel who have been buffeted through through the ages yeah. um, as performers, and they're controlled by a voice off screen, off stage. So we, we did it. We worked on it, and we we did it. Uh, we did a two night run at uh, Cafe La Mama, which is the big off off Broadway famous theater in New York, oh, and yeah. uh, 
We did it um, uh, March 6th and 7th, uh, 2020. And then a week later, everything shut down. Everything shut down, yeah. So we did it twice, and it was great. And now we're just trying to get ourselves together to do it again. So for those who would want to go check it out, uh, what's it like? If they know you from all these other things, what could they expect now with your show, Ellen? Um, it's it's very funny. And I get because we this I don't know how we would be able to produce it because it's a lot. It's there. There are a few original songs, but it's mainly covers. So, I mean, I get to sing. Um, uh um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Uh, Behind Blue Eyes, the REM song, you know, fabulous songs, you know, amazing yeah. uh, songs. And he and I sing duets and he does things. And it's it's very funny, and but it's got some very moving moments. It's, it's a highly unusual piece of material. And he's the writer. He's the main, my friend Robert is the script writer, but I'm pretty much the dramaturg. I was with him all the way in uh, in in making the piece. So we have to do it again. That we is just so have cool. to find some place to do it because people loved it, you know, and it was going to yes. keep going. I know it was going to keep, you know, growing and, and moving. And then the world came to a stop for everybody. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, uh, we actually have a clip as well here of you doing one of the, uh, Ian Hunter songs as well, uh, from actually these performances. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that right now, gang. And then we'll be back with our very special guest. Ellen Foley is here live, uh, from the country house, but just north of the city. She's still within range of the city. She's an apple throw away from metropolis. Yes, I <laughs> so do. don't be fooled. <laughs> Cool. Here, here she is doing her thing. <laughs> when I was just sixteen, I stood be so I'm gonna be somebody someday. You know what I think is really cool? It looked like in the little screen, you were singing along to it, weren't you? I was. Oh, that yeah. I realized. That <laughs> no, that's oh, fantastic. No, that's hey. No, 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 no. I love I it. No, I was like. Stop. They didn't see you. <laughs> Only I saw you. Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. And... Like, that because you're like. like <laughs> because you're like, oh no, it's a terrible thing to. Uh, oh no, that was terrific. I think that is great. I mean, it's like, is there any material that you? Have not, I mean, look, everybody's saying, oh my gosh, that was beautiful. Hashtag goosebumps. That was beautiful. Oh, I mean, everybody loving you. it. All of our gym thank masters. You, love it the love it is exactly. Thank you, love it is. I love you, love it is. They already said you're a gym master show, love it is. So they already queened you that or crowned okay. you that, which okay. is nice. Um, is there any, is there any material that you haven't touched on yet that you would love to tackle? in terms of genre of material? You know what? At one point, I did a very short-lived little cabaret show of um, Bertolt Brecht and Kurt Weill music. Do you know that? You know the Three Penny Opera? Oh, yeah, that? sure. You yeah. Know? And I love all that. That's kind of what our our uh, Club Dada show is, you know, that very Germanic kind of Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I love you know if I if once I did do uh, a show with all that material and that's that's not a bad idea to think about doing that again. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Is that something you think uh, you would like to put together? And I, that's my, I'm just thinking about it now. Like see I do that. a light bulb moment on the gym. You inspired me. I inspired, inspired me. Jim. It's it's the lovety. It's the whole vibe of it oh, all here. Oh, that lovety that's coming my way. <laughs> What about more television and more film work? No. <laughs> she she said, 
Do you like the way she swiveled when she said that? Oh, yeah. I did. I'm swiveling. I'm singing to myself. I'm yeah, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to audition, you know, and the, people always say, well, wouldn't you like to do Broadway again? I'm like, no. Last thing I want to do is go to a theater eight times a week and do a show. I have too many TV shows that I like watch. Yeah. They are. Right. <laughs> I can't be running out working. I, 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 you know, I, I just, I'm ensconced in my life. You're ensconced in your life. I'm ensconced. You're, are your, uh, are your sons in music or the media or, or um, any of the well, arts? Well, my younger son, Henry, who's 28, is yeah. a, um, a segment producer on Hallie Jackson's show on MSNBC. Oh, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my sure. other son is a financial analyst. So, and they Good both jobs. live in New York, which is great. Good are. jobs. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. 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 So when they look back at the material and they see your incredible career, um, I mean, to you, their mom, but when they see everything that you've done and all of it, that must be pretty cool for them too, huh? I think it is to a degree. Um, yeah, now they, they now come to my, they come to my shows and I mean, they, they've heard for years, you know, parents of, of their friends, you know, like freaking out when they hear that I'm their mother, you know, and I mean, I, you know, kids get embarrassed by everything, but to a degree, I mean, I'm saying that's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> would you consider writing uh, an autobiography a memoir i don't think i can remember enough to do that <laughs> <laughs> you uh have you ever thought of going into uh well you have i mean uh, have you thought of going in further into comedy <laughs> you've got a great sense of humor thank you <laughs> Well, I like that little bit I do in the beginning, like you saw in this sizzle reel. Yes. Open. New York is so great here, hosting Saturday Night Live, you know, because that's every, for some reason, every host they've had in time and memoriam has said, it's so great hosting this, being in New York. So I thought that would sort of a funny thing to say. That's a terrific shot of you. It really is. They, whoever the photographers, they really captured your eyes that nice. in that, that nice. shot. A nice yeah, they really captured your eyes in that shot. Um, you know, when you when you look at this extraordinary career, which is absolutely amazing, um, it, it's incredible when you think about it again, like I keep going back to the breadth and scope of what you've done and what you continue to do. Um, do you ever stop and say, wow, it's been quite a ride. I really have had an opportunity to taste so much of life through the arts in such a profound way. And the, the legacy is already intact, Helen. I mean, you've reached so many people and touched them in so many different ways through all, all that you've done and continue to do. But do you ever stop and pause, you know, during this great pause we've had the last couple of years where we're, I keep saying, I hope we come out of this more empathetic, kinder, more collaborative, uh, more creative, but to just look at it and say, you know, this has been, these opportunities have been extraordinary for you to be able to express yourself authentically in the way that Ellen wants to. Absolutely. I mean, there, there were definitely things in my career slash life that didn't feel good or like, like you know, not parts of my life that weren't happy at all. But then when you look back, on it, you know, you see what what was produced, what, what what work came out of it, and there was there has been a lot of it. There's been a lot of it, and like I said, the luck that I feel having been able to collaborate with so many people and make so many friends, and I feel like I have a lot of friends, which is kind of a great thing to be able to say mm, at yes. this point in my life. I have a lot of friends. Yes. A lot of it came through through work and, and connections, you know, in this business. I mean, that's those are the people I know, and a lot of them is, have stuck and have really remained great parts of my life. 
You mentioned also as well uh, the new album too, Fighting Words. Again, the collaboration with with Paul and the ten tracks on there as well, and that's something people can get like on uh, Amazon and can hear on Spotify, iTunes, probably all the all the, all the uh, places where all you the great places. Yes, and you also, uh, which I think was really cool as well. You mentioned. Um, it's a little bit of a, I mentioned the introduction, this collaboration with Robert Rubinsky from the original cast of Hair. Yes, on that right, cabaret, that's right, 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 yes. That yes. theater show, Club Dada in Difficult Times, which premiered at La Mama in 2020. Um, do you think you would, like, yeah, I know you mentioned that you would consider maybe doing another cabaret kind of show. And cabaret is so intimate you know it's your you're, the audience is right there and they're you're speaking to them and they're speaking to you and they're really feeling it you like that because you've you know you've been on big stages you've been in yeah. big studios on big sets but there's that intimacy of, of cabaret is that something that really appeals to you yeah, well it, i mean i i hope we do our show again you know it was in a a kind of a small space i think it could be in a larger space but because you know it's club da da it'll 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 be set up so you feel like you're in kind of a a german you know pre-war nightclub or something yeah i want to do i really hope we do that show it would be fantastic you know um merlin who's watching in ontario canada she had said something and i kind of thought this myself a little bit um she said, I see, I see it. She said, you look a little bit like Julie Andrews in that picture. Uh, that's nice. I can see it in the eyes. That's, yes. That's very sweet. Thank you, Marlon. I, I can see the Julie Andrews combination that yeah. she's uh, that she's making there. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah. I mean, really fantastic things. This was really cool, too, this, this here. Mm -hmm. um, you know... How did you know how to create the look, the, you know, the, the look of Ellen Foley? How did you know what, was it a look that was created for you? Was it something that was just reflective of, of you? And of course there's fighting words, gang. This is the one we were talking about. Yeah, that's, and, and that's a cool shot of you there. Yeah. This well, is the most recent album, but the look over the years, uh, how did it develop for you? Cause it's a, it's a real classic yeah. look. Yeah. Take that, take that off. Wait, take that off. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> they look great in all of them. Yeah. Well, um, the look, uh, the look, I don't know. It was, you know, I, I think I've always had a, um, I never, I never, I don't think I ever really followed trends. I mean, right. like you look at me in the eighties or whatever, I didn't look, I, you know, I never got going went on any trends, how people looked in the eighties, any of the kind of, you know, goofy fashion and stuff that uh, occurred then. I mean, this was me. I was more, looked like more of a chick from a French movie in the sixties or something. With Actually, all yes. Stuff. And it's evolved. Now my thing is I, I love wearing gorgeous suits all the time. That's my whole look now. I mean, you saw on that, uh, on the video, you know, from my gig, you know, I had a great suit, this a cool gold lame suit that I have. But yeah, I, I it wasn't, my look has never been um, manufactured. Right. You know, by right. anybody else. Right, exactly. It's it was you and and exclusively you. Mm -hmm. um, what about this look? Uh, <laughs> what so a happy cute. baby! What Let's a happy say, baby! He was happy at that moment. I would say most babies are you know don't have. I mean, is this the Gerber Gerber baby? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's you're like wow. Yeah. What a what a career I got coming up! Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> and here's somebody special too. There's mm. my father, Jack Foley. Yeah. Big Irishman that he was. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's these uh, the folks in our lives that uh, influence us in, in incredible ways. This is a great show. We pulled this up before. Tell us about this. This is um, the girl who sings with me. 
in our band. Her name is Emma Craig. And she, she, said, she was brought to me by the guy I should really speak about is named Charlie Roth, who is my musical director. And he's a, he's a brilliant musician. And he uh, brought uh, her to me in the band. And she has a theater background and she's got an amazing voice. She's a super musician. And uh, yeah, she just started working with me um, this past fall. That is Last so fall. cool. Yeah. Wow, That's that is great. really, yeah, that is really, really cool. This is great too. We showed this earlier. This is fantastic. Yeah, that was the same, um, the same photo session, a guy named Greg Gelman who did the one that you said look like Julie uh, Andrews. Like, you know, Julie Andrews. Yeah. He took some fantastic photos. Really yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> there she is. The hills are alive. With a sound of music. I know. Yeah. Cool stuff. So, uh, is there a website or something that people can go if they want to learn more about upcoming shows, performances, cool things that you are working on that you're excited about, places that they can go? Yeah, there is a, you know, I, you might have gleaned from my today not being able to figure out how to do things on the computer that I'm very much a Luddite, but there is a website that people can go to, you know, ellenfoley.com, how, you know, up to date it is, you know, if anybody, I think Paul is, is, is in charge of it, but you know, whether or not, I don't know. I don't know. This whole thing. <laughs> just I just, just I, Google her name, folks. A few, a few Google things it. will come up. Just few, Google it. And there is the Ellen So you'll find me. I'm everywhere. When you, uh, you know, look back at it all, but even the current things in your life, what are some of those, uh, those blessings and joys in your life that continue to propel you forward to want to, to communicate and collaborate and to, you know, continue to entertain and inspire us all. I mean, you've got a lot of blessings and joys, the family, your health, yeah. the voice still fantastic. A lot of great blessings. What are some additional blessings and joys in your life? Well, I think you you just said them. I mean, I, I'm healthy. I am healthy. It's really, you know, a great thing. You know, at, at my age, I mean, I'm feeling very strong. And but you know, when you when you have you know a powerful um, family and and support around you, that's you know that it's everything. I think if you know if I was alone and depressed and you know and getting on in years, I think I um, wouldn't feel so free. I feel very free because I feel fortunate in my life. I feel very free. I feel a lot freer than I did when I was young because I don't give a shit. Right, right, <laughs> I don't right. <laughs> like me, don't like me. I think I'm great. I'm yeah. mad as, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Right. Um, <laughs> you're not supposed to curse on your show? Oh, no, you can't. Okay. YouTube gets a little crazy with everything. I'm sorry. But, but okay. no, no, no. That's perfectly. That's perfect. one word out of this whole hour. Is out of this whole. Pretty good for me. Yeah. <laughs> what what happens? You got something underneath we can't see that gives you a little electrical shocks when you want to say something like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's like funny. I'm you just, you do I'm you. You do you, Ellen. You're you're amazing. Absolutely amazing. So great having you here, Ellen. You're amazing. So nice to meet you. Continued blessings. Thank you, Thank you so as much. Well. That's from Kathleen in New York City and Maureen in Hot, Arizona. You are beautiful, Ellen. You don't take a bad photo. Well, thank you. Yeah. The audience. I'm I'm so happy to have been joining Celebrity. you, all you loveities, everybody who's with Jim all the time, just to be part of all of you. This has been really great. You know who's with us all the time, too? Mr. George Burns is always with us. George Burns. <laughs> there he is with his cigar and his Hi. red pocket square. And he's there usually, he he's always hanging out down there with his martini. 
and okay. his cigar. And right. he says, you knocked it out of the park, kiddo. He absolutely loved this conversation that we had. And, oh, uh, George. Oh, oh George. George. <laughs> <laughs> Ever do voiceover work? That makes me think. You ever do any no, voiceover work, no. character work? I can see, you know, what I your voice is. That. Just, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. one of those things like commercials, voiceovers. Yes. There are like 10 people who do everything, right? There's, it's, it's kind of a closed uh, world. So I never, I never broke into anything like that. Well, it's still opportunities, you know, yeah. never, never say never as, as you, I don't think you ever have really. Even Steve Bird says, Ellen, you did a very good Gracie impression. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're First amazing. time I ever tried it. Yeah. I, I, I'm, um, I know you want to get out of here. Not at all. No I, way. I listen to all the time. And my husband laughs at me, but there is a, uh, on Sirius XM, there is a, a classics radio channel. And I love to listen to all the old radio stuff from like today. I was listening to Angels with Dirty Faces with Jimmy Cagney, but you know, Burns and Allen all the time and Jack Benny, you know, somehow that kind of stuff gives you comfort. Doesn't it? Yes. You, from whence you came when you were young, you know, some of that stuff. Anyway. Is there anything that you learned about yourself during the last few years? Maybe did you have to downtime to sort you know, a lot of people have been reflecting and looking at their lives as far as they, what they want to do going forward and things of that nature. Have you had opportunities to do that? Uh, well, I, I was really surprised that, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, I just kind of dived right into to living out of the city. We had the house for a long time, probably yeah. almost 20 years. Yeah. And I said, I like it in the summer, but I always want to be in the city in the winter, da, 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 da. but it became, I just changed my whole way of life. Totally. Yeah. I do though, what this has taught me, I really want to travel. Now, travel, yes. I haven't been able to, you know, during this. And you know, when I used to work, especially with music, I really saw a lot of the world except now you know i haven't for quite some time i really want to travel do you have places on your ellen list that you still would like to see or you you know as far as traveling around the world or that you would love to return to i'd like to go back to israel i um want to spend time in italy and greece and uh you know places you know like egypt you know i, I like places with antiquity Yes. I really want to. I love experiencing all that. That is cool. That is really cool. This really has been amazing, my friend. You really, really are terrific. I just want to show you. Merlin says, uh, Ellen, what a joy to have met you. Uh, Frank says, yep, three girls, three. We talked about that earlier, too. Uh, if you missed anything, join us late. Go back and watch the episode. You will thoroughly enjoy it. She really is spectacular. Uh, Ellen, you are wonderful. It's been a pleasure hearing about your incredible career. Keep on keeping on. Lovely hugs to you. That's Maureen in Arizona sending some uh, lovely as well. And this was terrific. We said we would chat for like an hour. We, we did it almost an hour and 20 minutes. It did nice. Me, right? It went like this. I went. I'm recording the uh, the hearings, the January. 16th. Oh, you are. Yeah, I got it. I want to go watch that. Got to go watch that as well. And that has uh, been a great source of entertainment for me. Frank D also says, "Into the woods." Into the woods. Yes. Hey, Frank, let's go. <laughs> Into the woods. She she is uh, hidden away in Duchess County at the. That's right. At the country home. The country home. We don't want that. To to change the image, the country home. She'll be back in the city on stage doing her thing. Yep. Uh, you uh, are epic. Um, and, and Paul said you would be, and I knew, and I'm so glad that we, uh, I'm so glad we had this time this together. Time together. Uh, what was it like, before we do go, Carol Burnett, Florence Henderson, also two of my favorites. What was it like even having any interactions with the two of them? You know, I was in such a fugue state you know, I'm, I'm sure they were they were incredibly nice and generous. I remember Carol Burnett was particularly uh, complimentary to me. But you know, they were. I don't know. I was so busy trying to figure out where to stand and how how I got there. <laughs> but I'm assuming they were fabulous. Yeah. 
<laughs> sometimes, yeah, you just like, uh, you know, well, now today, if you were going to do these auditions that you really don't want to do now, a lot of people, you have to do the self tape where you have oh, yeah. to do the audition self taping at, at home. home. Do you yes. like that? Or did you like to go to the actual places and chat with the casting director? I, or whatever? No, I don't want to talk to him. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I don't audition, but I think doing it at home yeah. to be able to control it and to be able to do it over and over again, it puts you on a, on a better footing, I think. I, yeah. Do you see more music coming down the pike? And again, congratulations for those tuning in. This is the latest album, Fighting Words with Ellen Foley. You can check it out on Amazon and Spotify, iTunes, everywhere else. It really is a fantastic album. And again, all, all the music over the years is just so many is so much you, guys you can go you know online to get it all i encourage you to do that but uh do you see more coming your way and do you like to to write music as much as performing do you like the songwriting area as well i you know i did some of it to some degree but i didn't feel it was really my strength and in paul i have a great uh song songwriter you know we are collaborators because you know he writes with me i have i have input but uh i think yeah you know we should do more you know he and i should do more we should keep going here absolutely absolutely this was fantastic really uh, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation yeah, i enjoyed it thank you so much oh yeah spending all this time with us and the viewers watching live and folks you know can watch this again in the archives on our youtube channel gym masters tv thanks for for spending all this time with us but also i hope the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoyed the time with me as That's much as great. i have with you ellen it's really really so fun thank you it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, spread the word about our show to everybody. It uh, certainly takes a, a village. And uh, thanks again for all of the great material that you have uh, delivered for us over a long time. And you're, you're still out there doing it. Like I said, you know, you could be, you could have your feet in the sand in, uh, you know, Miami, <laughs> having a banana colada swinging in a hammock. You don't have yeah. to, but you love what you do. It, it's yeah. in you. It's, yeah. uh, it's who you are and you Absolutely. love communicating and inspiring and having a good time with everybody. And I think that's really, really cool. So you got it. Thanks for having a good time with us. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> you be well. Okay. You take care, you Ellen. Too. And now you can let the dogs up. Who let the dogs out? They're downstairs <laughs> circling. I got to take one out. <laughs> so he can do his thing. His duty. Yeah. Right. Ellen, you're okay. the best. You're welcome back anytime. And thanks so much for being with us. Okay. Okay, Jim. Take care. Uh, you take care as well. Bye-bye. Comparable, incredible Ellen Foley here on the show. Maybe, uh, you know, I've always been a fan, but maybe you learned a little bit more about her. And what's really cool is, again, those of you know her from her prolific music career, those of you knowing from Broadway, film, television, all of it has been touched upon on this episode of the show. And really, we just scratched the surface, gang, because there's so much more that uh, she's done over the years. And she's still doing her thing, which I think is absolutely fantastic. She truly is an entertainer's entertainer. And this is something that she's always wanted to do. She even said that she did cabaret. Uh, she had a show you know, there as well. And of course, you guys, for the TV fans, she loves classic TV as well. Night Court, and that was the second season. She was playing uh, Billy Young there as well, and there she is, Night Court on NBC. But now you can, of course, can see all of that uh, in uh, the re-airs on all of the decades, BTVs, Antenna TVs, all those great uh, nostalgic TV channels. Hair we talked about as well. Her wonderful uh, friendship with Paul, um, which I think was really terrific. She, she paid homage and she talked about him a lot. And I think that's really fantastic. And again, she is a legend uh, on many different levels and many different uh, scenarios. There she is again, having a good time with Meatloaf and uh, who she also worked with as well. This is another fantastic, more recent shot of her doing her thing. And this goes back in time in the studios as well. Really, really cool. Cover of TV Guide on Night Court. The latest album. Fighting Words as well. You can check that out. As I mentioned, that's available, you know, on Amazon and Spotify and 
you know, you guys are right. She does look a little bit like Julie Andrews there, huh? If we didn't say anything, you would have thought that that was Julie. A really great shot. Some more current as well. And then in the past, she's had a good time. And uh, she's done her thing from St. Louis uh, to New York and beyond. Touched into LA, did her thing there, and then came back to the New York area. She loves the East Coast. And again, you can find uh, a lot of the material on the music platforms. I like cool stuff, right? Again, what's your favorite song of the music? Uh, there's so many. Boys in the Attic. Remember that one too? And again, you know, this might be, there might be some of you who are watching for the first time and maybe you just learned about Ellen for the very first time. She's graced a lot of magazines over the years, covers and so much more. We're talking Ellen Foley. Uh, female rocker, yes, but wonderful singer, Broadway actress, uh, film, television, you name it. She really has touched upon it all. And it's been such a joy and an honor to have her here, gracing uh, us with her presence on the Gym Master Show live. You know, I want to let you know, coming up on Sunday, Nathan Carter is going to be here live from Ireland, Irish country music star, wildly popular. He outsold One Direction and Drake. Did you know that? This will be his return visit. Sunday is a special time for those of you watching live. That'll be noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So it's an early Sunday show, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. The reason why we're doing it then is because for him in Ireland and for his fans and family, uh, it'll be five o'clock at night in the in Ireland and the UK. So we're going to doing at noon uh, this Sunday. And then Legends... And friends of mine, Monica Mancini, daughter of the legendary Henry Mancini, her fabulously talented husband, Greg Field, eight-time Emmy winner, drummer extraordinaire, producer, musician, and of course, uh, Monica, a brilliant and spectacular singer, daughter of Henry Mancini. They are with us on Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And if you didn't see the episode with the one and only Melba Moore, Music legend, film star, Broadway actress, singer. What an epic conversation that was. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And Maureen says, uh, thank you very much, gang, for all these great comments throughout the Gym Master Show live series. Tell all your friends about our show. Uh, if you have guest suggestions, you can uh, send us a note at gymmasterstv at gmail.com. Again, gymmasterstv at gmail.com. If there are some folks that perhaps you would like to see on our show, we have, uh, we're booked weeks and weeks in advance with guests that are coming up, working hard behind the scenes here, keeping the rivers flowing. But again, if you, uh, if you have some suggestions, uh, again, you can reach out to us there as well. Send guest inquiries to gymmasterstv at gmail.com a potential guest and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, right here on our YouTube channel, all at Jim masters TV as well. So again, uh, good stuff. Jim masters TV at gmail.com is in case you want to uh, send us some guest suggestions. I know a lot of you have as well, and uh, we're working through it all. We get a lot, a lot of emails that come our way. Kathleen says, thank you, Jim. This was great. The pleasure is all Mine. Kathleen also says, I knew Ellen mostly from Night Court, had no idea what an awesome singer. Yeah. Uh, and Steve Bird, thank you as well. Ellen was fantastic tonight. She still rocks. Yes, she does, right? We had all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, Lisa, Angela, Lisa, uh, connect with me as well because I have some exciting stuff that I want to tell you about. I know you were with us when Melba Moore was on. Uh, reach out to us, uh, uh, you know, send us a note because I have some incredible news to tell you. So we would love to uh, connect with you, Lisa, Angela watching as well. You guys are the best. Thanks for being with us. We have got such a great audience watching around the world, commenting and being so passionate and enthusiastic about what we do here at our Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show series that we call The Gym Master Show. We don't say goodbye around here. We say, see you later. Take care. Slancha. Hasta la vista, Avita Zain, Shalom, Sayonara, Moilup. Take care, be well, and all the rest. 
Thanks for being with us. One more time, we thank Ellen Foley for being with us. She was amazing. Great music, great chat, updating you guys about current things that she's working on. And she is just uh, an absolute joy and a pleasure to be uh, gracing us with her presence. And funny, isn't she funny too? She's got a great sense of humor. Uh, you can see why she was cast in some of those uh, sitcoms as well. Her personality is just spot on. All right, gang. Thanks for being with us. Uh, spread the word. Don't forget uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's no cost for that. And make sure you click that notification bell, gang, so you never miss out on any of our incredible episodes. And uh, give this episode a thumbs up like as well. There is an icon that looks like a big thumb on all our episodes. Click up. <laughs> Click that and leave a comment as well. Thanks to all of you who have been doing that. Leave a comment on our YouTube channel. That helps us grow. It lets us know what you're enjoying. And um, even YouTube loves when you do that because then they allow these episodes to be seen by millions more from all around the world. Thanks, gang. You're the best. Busy day for me. I literally flew into this chair after two uh, television shoots up in Boston. We were up in Boston today and we were on two television shoots, literally just made it here in time to be with all of you and welcome our incredible guest, uh, singer and actress extraordinaire, Ellen Foley. Really, really amazing. Yes, we had some clam chowder earlier, uh, some great Thai food, Vietnamese food as well. And thank you, Maureen, and uh, cool stuff. You have a good time as well, Kathleen, and everybody watching all around the world on the Gym Master Show Live. Thanks for being with us. We really, truly do appreciate you. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks to all the guests. Thanks to all the lovely viewers. And again, thanks to you. If you're watching, uh, maybe not just live, but maybe you're watching this again in the archives or the first time in the archives, and maybe you don't comment, you're just quiet, you don't, you're not in the chat room right now. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you being here as well. Be good to one another, take care of one another, uh, love one another, and uh, take care of yourself as well. That's very important to do that. We'll see you on the next one, okay? This is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you, and you, and you, and you, for your time this time. Till next time, George Burns says, see you later as well, and all of us here at the Jim Masters Show Live. Thanks for being here and uh, spending time with us. We uh, know from the messages we get that you guys uh, really look forward to these shows, you look forward to our conversations, the levity, the entertainment, and all the other fun stuff that uh, we try to throw your way and uh, to inspire, entertain, and, and all the rest. We'll see you on the next one. Be well, gang, and cheers. <laughs>